Welcome back to Software Inc, everybody. We begin once again with a time lapse, and I love what we're working on today. In the last episode, I asked for suggestions for our factory where we're going to be making our console, which we do start designing today, and there were some amazing suggestions. So I took to Twitch, I went and started live streaming some Software Inc, and that's where this was built, and as I explained to them, I shall explain to you, this thing is based on a couple of different suggestions and a building from Cities Skylines. So, I was reading the comments in the last episode, and there was one that stood out to me, I can't remember who it was, but the comment was along the lines of, hey, why don't you build something that looks like an old factory or an old mill and convert it to be a modern production plant for your console? And then there was another comment that was like, hey, why don't you build something that's like super modern, lots of glass and all of that? And I thought to myself, why don't I do both? So that's what this is. And there's a building in City Skylines. If you've watched my city stuff, you will know the building I'm talking about. It's one of the European industrial buildings. It's it's my favorite one. It was one of the thumbnails for the vanilla Let's Play, I think, years ago. It was in a thumbnail recently. I've talked about it recently. Basically, this building was based on all of those. It is an old mill that has been converted into some kind of factory that is modern or is going to be modern. It has a modern extension to it, which is where we're going to put all sorts of things like a reception, a meeting room, a staff break room. And I absolutely love how this thing turns out. I go so far as putting smokestacks on this thing, and I go even further by making it look like the tops of the stacks are darker and dirtier than the bottom parts of the stacks. I absolutely love how this thing turns out. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk myself up here, but I just, I love it so much. It's like nothing I've ever built in Software Inc. before, and it's relatively simple, and you could absolutely recreate this if you wanted to. But the thing is, you don't have to because it's on the Steam Workshop. And you know what? So is my other factory because I totally forgot to put that on the Steam Workshop. You can download this and you can download my other factory by going to the links in the video description. You'll find download links for all four of the Nerdresoft buildings thus far. All in the Steam Workshop, all available for you to put into uh, Software Inc. and do whatever you want with. And it's like I said, with the first two buildings, whatever you do, let me know. You know, you can you can let me know on Discord at discord.gg slash conflict nerd or at conflict nerd on Twitter. Tweet your, you know, whatever pictures or videos or whatever to me. I want to see what you do with these buildings or just tell me a story about what you do with them because I think it's so cool. Now, the other thing I do with these buildings, and it's something that I expand on a little bit further in the episode, and it's something you'll see because not every bit of detail in these buildings is actually going to be in the time lapse. I recorded about an hour and a half of this build, but the whole thing took about three hours. There's some really cool detailing inside of this. I wanted to have it possible to for, for people in the building to see the products as they're moving throughout the building. So something I'll be doing later on is, or something you will see later on, is some conveyor belts going through corridors. And I want to expand that eventually to have conveyor belts going into offices. I'd like conveyor belts to be visible from the reception. I'd like them to be visible from like meeting rooms and stuff like that as well. You know, behind glass, similar to what we've done underneath the main Nerdresoft tower, I'd like them to be, you know, there and visible and something that people can see and people can be like, oh, there's that product going to a store or going to be assembled or whatever. I love that. I love trying to create sort of stories to kind of accent and and compliment why I might do things. So, you know, having the conveyor belts visible is so people can see them. So the visitors, the people coming to strike up deals with the company can see them. Maybe Nerdresoft does tours of this factory. I don't know. I just, I like coming up with these stories. It's been really fun. It's something I've done a couple of times so far with this particular software -ing series, which I'm really enjoying. I realize I've kind of gone off topic here. I'm not talking about the build, but I do want to take a second and just thank everybody that has been watching this series so far. It has uh, 
it's been a lot of fun and it still is a lot of fun. There's still a bit of a, a road ahead with Software Inc. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. And that's something I'll talk about later in this video, actually, because I've already done the commentary for the, the gameplay part. But I am really enjoying this Software Inc. series. It's, it's a lot of fun. It feels kind of collaborative, like I'm taking ideas from comments and Twitch chat and Twitter and Discord. And it's, it's just really cool. Speaking of taking ideas, this little thing I'm building here is something I'm lovingly calling the airlock. And I stole that design. I've mentioned it like three times already. The Software Inc. subreddit is such a good place for inspiration, just for ideas for this game. And I saw someone post this like airlock design thing. It's just so cool. It's so simple. It's three doors, you know, one tile apart from each other. It's a glass one, a normal one, and a glass one. And then you put green lights on one side, red lights on the other. And it just looks like an airlock. I think it's I think it's absolutely awesome and I I absolutely love it. Now, I think I've rambled enough. I think it's about time that we go ahead and start moving into the gameplay section of the video because uh well, I think a little bit of a deep dive and a tour of the factory is is in order. So let's get to that. And just like that, we have a new factory. It is a combination of this old mill looking thing with a modern extension. It has some smokestacks and I absolutely love how this thing looks. But of course, it is not finished. There is still work to be done on this thing. It needs an interior because it doesn't have one right now. And the simple reason it doesn't have anything inside is because we don't know what it's gonna take to build a console so that's something we're gonna have to deal with today and we will get to that but first it is february 2009 which means that captain murder stab 3 is coming out next month so let's see how that does and then let's go deal with the factory and let's also oh my god a lot of people just retired let's make sure that's not any team leaders it isn't fantastic okay let's see how captain murder stab 3 does the project management team, Captain Murder Stab, just released the FPS game, Captain Murder Stab 3. Is it good? It's outstanding. Wait, no, it isn't. It's down right there at the bottom. Where is it? Is it? It is. It's outstanding. Good. I was a little concerned there. Also, just to point out, Captain Murder Stab 2, 1.1 million active users. Three years after it came out, still 1.1 million active users. It has become our best seller. That's kind of, that's kind of amazing. All right, let's start printing this thing. Let's go, where am I looking here? Start printing. We want uh, 75,000 copies of that, which apparently didn't register. So 75,000 copies max before it stops. That way we can make sure that this thing is going to sell really nicely. Marketing is already being handled, but here's what I want to do two things I want to do. I want to update this thing and bring all of the tech up to date. So absolutely everything in here is going to need a little bit of love. Unfortunately, well, I wonder, I wonder, should we update the tech? Hold on. Amplitude Studio. Can I not use Amplitude Studio to make the audio on this thing better? I can. Oh, I absolutely can. Okay. So we're going to use Amplitude Studio and then for 3D, we're going to use Vertex Studio for 2D, which was really outdated there. We are going to want to use ah, Final Studio. No, that I don't want to do. Well, I guess, we, I guess we're going to have to. We'll, use, we'll want the 2006 tech level. So we're going to use all of those. Systems, we're going to bring up to date. Recommends about a year. Four programmers, one artist. That should be fine. Uh, it is going to be source controlled, and we'll hit that update as soon as possible. And then what I want to do is I want to make an expansion pack immediately. I immediately want to make an expansion pack here. And I'm thinking it's probably going to be another Sergeant Stabby Face pack, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, we do want some new playable characters. We're probably going to go for, let's say, well, three of them. We'll go for some new, uh, some new sprites this time around. We'll get some new guns in there. We'll go for three of them. We can add a new map, I guess, which gives some story and some audio with a bit of story as well. And that seems 
pretty good less than a year that's fine so let's get everything sorted out here oh man i've just noticed that vector studio has a 2001 tech level good lord okay we are absolutely using final studio 2 on this and then for the audio tool it can be amplitude studio we need to update that thing like we really need to update that thing we also want to let's see we're missing a level 2 audio artist so let's grab the audio teams and put them on this and then the development teams oh we might not need to do what i did there okay update update that's fine can i just have the updates team do this i absolutely can also i think this search bar might be new i know there was an update to software in recently but i think this search bar might be new and i like it i'm gonna be honest i like that a lot okay uh we're gonna source control this the price is 20 we're gonna do 15 and i don't know let's do i kind of want to do sergeant stabby face pack two actually we'll go for stabby face returns the former sergeant stabby face has been stripped of his rank after some questionable decisions in the field and now he's back with a vengeance to clear his name and prove that he was innocent and regain his honor that's <laughs> that's the story of stabby face returns the first expansion pack for captain murder stamp three all right <laughs> let's <laughs> develop that <laughs> i'm sure it's gonna be great okay now i just want to know how much money uh captain <laughs> captain motor stamp 3 is gonna make oh wait no i also want to port it totally forgot that was a thing uh we want to port this to absolutely everything that we can possibly port it to so most recent releases oh my god wow 2.6 million active users uh let's port it to this 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 uh anything with less than a hundred thousand users i'm gonna say no Wait, no, that was, I just selected everything. Uh, we'll go for you, and we'll go for you. That's Nerd OS. Oh, we're going back to 19, we're going back 10 years. That's kind of cool, okay. All right, so we're going to port it to all of those for some extra, <laughs> for some extra potential consumers, which seems like a pretty solid idea. And I guess now we just wait for the end of the day to see how this thing does. So let's very quickly prioritize this update which I don't think is going to go out in time for release, but that's okay. And let's see. We're currently at $663 million. 677. Not bad. Wait, what do you want? A golden handshake? Oh, boy. Yeah, we'll give you the golden hand. I'm not giving you your own office. That is not happening. Uh, accept. There we wait. Accept. Can I accept it? There we go. Perfect. So how did it do? It is widespread marketing, immediately 5 million in profit. Last month did 7.5 million with 153,000 active users immediately. Not bad. Now, I imagine, yeah, they are designing Captain Motor Stamp 4. They're aiming for a February 2013 release, which actually I'm okay with. I don't, I don't mind them aiming for that. That's a pretty good turnaround. It's four years and it might be a little bit quicker. But uh, I've also just noticed that the the games night team doesn't seem to be working on this. So let's just uh, let's very quickly get those guys working on it, and that should hopefully speed things up a little bit. But that's good. That's that's more profit. That's a good successful release. Uh, Horse Simulator was actually brought forward to December two thousand nine, which is very exciting. So Horse Simulator three is going to be going out this year. This update for Vector Studio is going pretty well. The Captain Murder Stab update is going well. The port's going slowly. But that's all stuff that we can deal with. We have money coming in. I'm happy about it. We're getting money from our subscriptions, which I want to just check real quick. Sales, subscriptions, 5.2 million. Let's have a look at this factory because there's some things we got to talk about. So as I mentioned, this thing is almost completely hollow because we don't know what we're going to need in order to make a console so that is something we're going to have to deal with today but i do want to show you some things that i've done to this factory because it's not completely hollow for example down here we have some hallways we have some conveyor belts we have ways to get goods out of here and i very intentionally brought the conveyor belts through the hallways because i think that just looks really freaking cool so that's kind of what's going on here but what's interesting is this little space over here i really intentionally wanted this like small modern expansion to this thing because i just think it's it's a nice bit of contrast between the old sort of mill look that we have going on 
So what I did with the space is I just created a new reception and to be completely honest, I might, I, I might, I might change this reception around and change this around and also change this one around so that these are just going to be like security spaces rather than actual receptions. And then we're just going to have two receptionists in the factory and that's how we'll get deals coming in. So we only have to worry about one reception being clean rather than like what four right now what i also love about this space is that it's the first time we're seeing the actual nerdrasoft logo because that's what this is and i don't think i've ever talked about this before but i des i designed is the wrong word i made quote unquote this years ago with one of the first appearances of nerdrasoft i don't ever think i put it in a video but this is the current Microsoft logo rotated 45 degrees with the colors inverted. Genuinely, that's exactly what this is. If you grab that logo, invert the colors, that it's this. So I just did that in Photoshop, grabbed the color codes and put it in the game. And so we have this logo, but I also put it in a little space above the door, which I think looks amazing. This is something that was suggested on the live stream. I streamed this build, which I've probably talked about during the time lapse, but I think it looks so cool having it above the door so much so that I went and did exactly that above this door and this door as well. I think it looks awesome. It's it's also a really nice little development on the old Nerdrasoft kind of diamond pattern that we've been doing through this building, which I'll be honest with you, this was intentional because I kind of knew that one day we were probably going to do this. But moving upstairs from the new reception, we have a meeting room, we have a break room, and I don't think there's any toilets in this building at all yet. There will be, but right now there's not. Also, this meeting room is really, really dark, but at nighttime, it actually looks kind of cool. Like it's, it's a pretty good looking space. I'm actually really pleased with just how this whole thing looks at night. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. So hopefully at some point today, we can go ahead and get this thing turned into a fantastic looking factory or whatever it's going to be i'm also thinking i should probably try and get bathrooms in here sooner than later so let me go and take this window and this window away and i'm gonna try and put some bathrooms on all of the floors because i can do this and i can do this and then if we go and grab a door i can put a door right there and i can put a door right there and these are basically going to be mirror images of each other and i'm kind of okay with that uh well sort of mirror images of each other but well as close to that as we can get uh so we'll do we'll do this and we'll put a shower i guess there and i think that's probably fine and i guess we want to have the interior of this thing i'm gonna go for sort of a pink and the floor can just stay however it is and then for lighting well, what do we want to do for lighting? I guess we could do like a couple of these guys. So like one and two like that. And that should be all right. Could probably change them up a little bit. So the lights are still kind of warm, but not quite as not quite as warm. And then for the little lights on the walls, we'll do something like that. And I think that looks okay. It's not luxurious, but it does the job. And that's kind of all I need it to do. So if I just clone, in fact, if I just delete that room, I think I can probably just grab you, right? And then slap it right there. Oh, walls cannot intersect. Well, that complicates things. And there we go. Every floor now has some bathrooms. This corner doesn't, of course, because there's a door in it, but that should keep us good for the factory. So now I guess we're going to have to look at a console, which I'm really nervous about. I am I'm genuinely really, really quite nervous about this. Because I also want to start working on another Nerd OS. And we also need to start working on another N phone. Because whilst this thing has over half a million active users and this has nearly a million, and whilst they've done very well in terms of profits, we need to stay up to date with them. So let's at the very least look towards a new N phone. So we'll try and do the N-Phone 3, and the old one had all of this stuff. So we're going to throw in everything that the old one had, just to make sure 
that the new one is at least as good. And it still gives us a really good expected interest, but I feel like we need more. I feel like system recovery should be a thing, especially since this probably won't release until about 20, let's say 2012, maybe further away. In terms of audio, speech recognition would be kind of cool. But again, we've got so much wasted interest. I don't, I don't know about this. I just, I just don't. I'm really, I'm really not too sure. Super optimization. Spend time when developing software to save money when ordering hardware. Remove the extra cost when ordering product prints. I like the idea of that. That sounds like a great idea. Then custom themes, meh. Widgets, I mean, I think we're just going to do the optimization, to be completely honest. And we'll just use, I guess... NOS to uh to do this we'll bring all the tech up to date as much as we can and we'll see what happens hopefully we're not going to need more components for this thing I think that'll be all right so it is going to be the Enphone 3 I have seen a couple of comments saying that I should price these things higher I am going to take a risk on this one and I'm going to go for I mean what does it recommend right now 38197 let's go for 399 Let's go for 399 and see what happens. So physical store cut is 120%. If I make that $100, they take 30. Yeah, so really they take a they take a percentage essentially. So it doesn't really matter if I make this thing like 4000, they're going to take 1200 per sale. So that's that's tricky. I think we're just going to make it 399 and we'll stick there. And then in terms of design, let's see what we got. We could, oh, I do like that. It seems like it still has the notch right there though, which is a bit weird. But I, I, I like the idea that maybe we have just this giant screen now. It seems a little chunkier than it used to be. Can I, can I, yeah, I can flatten it out a little bit. I can make it really ultra thin, much bigger screen. I actually kind of like that a lot. I'm gonna be honest. I think it's kind of it's kind of cool. So what is this? That's the notch. That's the notch width. Let's make that small. And then the screen can be higher there. What is that? Bezel screen height top. Yeah, much much bigger screen. We have it as wide as it can be. The phone itself can be a little chunkier. So we're getting into like tablet territory, which I think is fine. It's already is so it, it is as big as it can possibly be. And then for rounded edges. I, yeah, I like the idea around it. Look at that thing. That's a good looking phone. That's, that is, a, it's a, it's a chunker, but it's a good looking phone. And then for the color on this thing, I mean, let's go for something a bit different. Let's go for like a blue. So we'll go for like a, I don't know, like a good, a good looking, a good looking blue. Does that look okay? It's a bit different for Nerdrasoft. We've done gold and we've done our burgundy so far. So a blue phone, or at least a blue trim, it's different, but I like it. So that's what we're going to go for. We're using NOS. We don't need to worry about any of that. We can auto balance and we can, I guess, start developing this thing. So let's see. Lead designer Beverly Pope. I'm kind of okay with that. You have done nothing so far, which is interesting, but uh, sure. We'll give this thing to Beverly, I I guess. Hmm. Unless we want to give it to you, in which case we can go from 62 to 97% creativity. Which doesn't seem like a bad idea. It seems Beverly's fixed at 75. Uh, you know what? We're going to give it to Annie Alexander. That seems like a great idea. And then for the teams, it's going to be plain and simple. We need 2D, 3D audio. We need network and we need systems. And I think that just about covers everything. Those guys can cover the hardware situation as well. We're not going to be publishing this. So we'll just go ahead and start developing the Enphone 3. Now, we have that ready to go. It's going to be designed. Let me also just check this retirement. It wasn't a team leader, so that's good. Now we need to start looking at a console. But just before we do that, let's see if we can get this Captain Murder Stab update out, which we absolutely can. This Vector Studio update, I'd like to get that out the door as well, if we can, which I'm hoping we can. Come on, 802. There we go. So those have gone out. Vector Studio, Vertex Studio, Amplitude Studio, all making money. That's great. 
Captain Motor Stab is not making as much as I would like it to make, which is slightly annoying, but hopefully the expansion does good for us. So let's look at a console. I'm nervous about this, but we're going to give it a shot. So we would want this to have a few different things. We would, pro well, let's see. We're going for 2009. Let's say this thing's out by 2013, 2014. Obviously, we're going to want networking. We're going to want all of the, we're going to want all of these features. I want super optimization so that we can save money when ordering hardware. We probably want system recovery, user accounts. The thing is, if I go too crazy with this, like what I have right now, I could, I could optimize this for 100% interest, right? I, I could, I could optimize this. It'll take about two years. It needs relatively small teams doesn't even need artists so this would be fine i would just i would like to do more with it i just i'm aware that we just don't necessarily need to hmm also adding things like uh wireless communication let's because i have to design the controller for this thing as well so i can make a wireless controller i can have built-in speakers and rgb lighting on the controller as well so there's there's things we can do here, but to be honest, I think, well, I guess the other problem is if I start adding a bunch of stuff later on, we're going to have to change the production line, but I guess we're going to have to do that anyway. So let's just do, I suppose, a simple console, right? And we'll make it, uh, we'll make it 299. We'll go up a little bit in price. It's a new IP server is going to be hosting source control. Of course, we'll come up with a name in a second. I just, I don't like doing this. I don't like going for the most basic thing, but at the same time, wasted interest is wasted interest, you know? So it's, it's, it's whatever. Also, I could, I could add some stuff here potentially. No, the joystick targeting's whatever. Anyway, let's, let's design this thing and see what it's going to look like. That is not what I'm looking for. That's, that's not quite, let's see. That's, that's a little bit more like it. Can I randomize the colors a little bit? Okay, we could go for a nice sort of black and white. I kind of like the gray. I'm not going to lie. It's, ooh, the black and gold's pretty cool, actually. Okay. So, in terms of layout, we can go for the Xbox One. We can go for whatever that is. Does that, oh, it does change the fan on the top as well. I kind of like this one with, like, the metallic gold thing on the bottom there. At least I think that's the bottom. It's kind of hard to tell what's what. I'm going to be honest. Let's, uh, how can I, how can I, <laughs> how can I change this? So that's the middle mod. I'd like that there. Uh, I'd like it to be, I think a little chunky is kind of cool. We could make it, oh, we could go for like a really small and, and like long console. I think that'd be, that'd be kind of neat. Uh, do I want to taper it? I think we already do. Oh God, no, we'll, we'll do that. Top curve, absolutely not. Bottom curve, absolutely not. The a bend, ooh. All right, we'll keep it. We'll keep it pretty, pretty standard. And there we go. I think that looks pretty good. I kind of like it. It's it's a bit weird looking, but that's sort of what I'm going for. I think this is the bottom. I think that's the top. So you got like this gold faceplate, which honestly, I'm kind of thinking we make silver just to set it apart a little bit. And then that middle part, I kind of want to be like that. And then primary is, ooh, I kind of, I don't, I don't hate that, but I think we'll just go for, we'll go for like black and silver. So it's not, you know, this sort of tacky black and gold thing sitting under your TV. I think that's pretty good. So what would we need for manufacturing? We would need, wow, not a lot at all, actually. If I add unified search, if I add removable drives, ah, so that does add a drive bay. So eventually we'd need to throw that in there. But I think that ends up being like the, ah, no, you need antenna. You would need device inputs. You would need nothing for either of those, which is kind of nice. None of those add anything either. So essentially it's just going to be the hardware part. So that'll add drives, that'll add antenna, that'll add device input. So we can upgrade all the tech. We just, okay, that, that's, that's fine. We're going to make, I guess, a really simple console 
for now, and then the next one will have to be amazing. So it's going to be 299. It's been designed. It's going to be a new framework, and oh boy. I, I, we're just going to go the nerd pro soft, I guess, core. I, we're going to go boring on that one. And I'm kind of tempted to just go boring with like the NBox. I know it's not creative, but you, we can do NBox. We can do NBox 360, NBox One, NBox One X. We can get the NBox Series X eventually and Series S and all that. You know, it, it's kind of. It's kind of easy, so we're probably going to go with the inbox. All right. Wait, no. The inbox. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like an email client, but it'll do. And now here's the tricky thing. We also have to make a controller for this thing. So it's going to be on source control, but in terms of manufacturing, the controller is actually going to need more than the console itself, which is kind of nuts. So we do have two things we're making here, which is slightly terrifying. And then design wise, yeah, this, this doesn't necessarily, this doesn't necessarily match the design of the console that we're going for. And apparently, oh wait, there's, that's the random button I'm looking for. Can I get something that sort of does match the console? Cause we went for this black and silver looking thing. I kind of like that. Obviously colors would need changed a little bit. But that's pretty good. Definitely not that. Let's see. That's that's probably that's very similar. To, oh god, that's like an old Sega controller. Good lord. Some of these are really giving me flashbacks to uh to when I was a, a fair bit younger. I like this. It look, it's well, no, it's too chunky. Um, no, come on. There were some good ones in there. Now it's just throwing these awful looking things at me. That'll do. So that's, that's kind of Xbox-ish, right? So we'll make it a little bit wider. We'll make it a little bit shorter, if that's a thing that I can do. That's the bump. That's the height. So we want to go a little shorter. And, oh, God, that, that curve at the back is quite something. Make the handles a little chunkier. The triggers are probably fine. Can I make the triggers wider? Apparently not. I can make it taller. Let's not do that. Okay. What is this? That's the curve at the top. Let's give it a bit of a curve. Uh, the bump is going to be there. That's the width. That's roundness, which we, we want a bit of roundness so it's not uncomfortable in your hand. The handles down here. Hold on a minute. This is this is trickier to navigate than I thought it was going to be. So that just extends the handles a little bit. That's the sort of curve on the controller, which I'm not really a huge fan of. And that's kind of our width. This is our... Wait, back finger space. Oh, I kind of like that. That's okay by me. We'll make it a little chunkier. And I think that's fine. So in terms of colors, let's, I guess, go with sort of a black and white. And then in terms of things like the buttons, we probably want to change those out for something else. Which I think, I think I can do like... I think I can drag and drop these, right? I think that's a thing. So I can like grab these and put them there. I change the style of them. Oh God, I can do weird things with them. Oh, I really can do weird things. I can scale them. Interesting. I thought I could change the color of these things. Oh, I absolutely can. Oh boy. All right. That's, yeah, I think, I think that's what we're going to go for. I've also just noticed this thing has three, three analog sticks. Let's, uh, Let's swap that out a little bit. How's the Xbox one? It's one at the bottom right and one at the top left. So that should be a D-pad right there. And that thing needs to be, I guess, a different style. I don't know. Something like that's probably fine. We'll make it a little bigger than the analog sticks. I mean, a little bigger and a little bigger. I think that looks all right. It is blatantly an Xbox controller, but I think that's fine. So that'll be the inbox controller. It's going to be $14.99. We can throw that into the mix as well. We're now at approximately three years. But if we go to next page, we can auto balance for 100% expected interest, which is fantastic. And now we have to look at who's actually going to make this. And I kind of want to say it's going to be me. I it's a little selfish, but I like putting myself on these projects, at least on the initial ones. 
so that we can, uh, you know, get it out the door. And it's like, oh, the founder of the company is still overseeing all these cool looking projects and things like that. So I'm here for it. Also, this thing is ready to develop. So let's get that expansion uh, going a little bit and see what we can do with it. Audio getting done pretty quickly there, which is great news. The end phone development or design rather, I think I'm going to prioritize quite considerably over the top of the console. In fact, you know what? Let's do it the other way. Let's prioritize the console over the end phone and see what ends up happening there. I don't really care for the fact that uh, I don't care for the fact that we're doing this this controller as a separate thing. I don't I don't necessarily love that, but I guess we're just sort of going to uh, to deal with that. And hopefully the end phone or sorry the inbox that's gonna take some getting used to. Hopefully the inbox ends up doing really well for us. In other good news, though, Stabby Face Returns is ready to be promoted into beta. So let's go ahead and start marketing this thing for... When did Captain Motor Stab 3 come out? We're also being robbed, apparently. That's news to me. March 2009. Okay, let's try and go for a very quick turnaround on this. So March, April, May, June, that's currently July. Let's go for November and see if we can get this thing to be good. It's already got a good number of followers. So we'll go ahead and throw some marketing out there. We'll throw a press build out there. And am I actively being robbed? Where are they? Oh, oh, okay. Well, interesting time to rob us. I've got to be honest with you. Very, uh, very interesting time to rob us, but fair enough. Hopefully they, uh, yeah, they, they, they got away with nothing. That's good. Or rather they didn't get away. Also, I keep getting this complaint that a computer is getting slow. We really should probably get ourselves more IT support because I'm pretty sure if we have a look at our staff, we have, what, five of them and they all come in at the same time. So let's go and get, I guess, one, two, three, four. That's calling them. That's not what I wanted. Well, that might actually help out. But anyway, one, two, three, four, five. Let's have these guys come in at like, uh, let's say six. Well, you know what? Let's say th 3 a.m. All right, we'll do 3 a.m. So they're going to be coming in and fixing some computers overnight, and that'll hopefully help us out just a little bit, and that'll hopefully do some good for us. Let's see. How are we doing for money? We're still making a decent chunk. Is it, uh, is it Captain Motorstab that's doing it? It's doing okay. 485,000 active users. It's selling pretty well. My subscription stuff is selling pretty well as well. In fact, subscriptions are almost at $6 million, which I'll absolutely take. I don't mind that at all. And then looking down here, the inbox controller is actually ready for development. So I think what we'll do is we, we can develop this thing and I imagine, I would imagine I can probably make this and sell it as its own thing, right? Or is there no point in releasing the controller until the console's done? I feel like there wouldn't be any point in releasing the controller until the console's done. I have to be honest, it seems like it'd be kind of silly to do that. But then at the same time, I could go and set up this entire manufacturing thing. It's two printers. It's, it's essentially four types of printer into two assemblers into a final assembler. So really, we could probably use this space right here, bring it down into this, this room right here, and, and have it go out. So I guess we'll set that up. I guess it, it it's not going to hurt to have this, this set up right here. So let's see what we can do. We need four printers. Okay, let's, let's see here. So what we're going to need is some component printers and I want them to be one, two, and three and four. And then we need two and then we need this. So that's fine. And then we need assemblers. And the way the assemblers are going to work is I guess, oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Uh, actually, I know exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to do assembler, assembler. In fact, this might all... Hold on. These guys... Wait, what, why have I done this? 
Oh. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, let's see here. Move you to there. Move you to there. And that should be fine. So these two are going to be controllers. This one is going to be a gyroscope. Wait. Is that how I'm going to do this? Yeah. Controllers, gyroscope, gyroscope, controllers. And then this is going to be a rumble unit. That's going to be plastic going into two assemblers. I don't know why that has to go into two assemblers. That seems a bit weird. I guess it's because these are quicker. I don't know. I don't know if we need two assemblers for this. I'll be completely honest. Seems a little... Seems a little unnecessary. So I'm just going to do one assembler right there. And then all of these guys, so these two, oh, this, yeah, these two and this one all go into a final component assembler. And I actually probably should do this the other way around so that I can have it all go towards where I, I want it to go. So this all needs to be rotated that way and sort of thrown right there. So then we just need these assemblers. So we'll go for here and here. We can put some recyclers, I guess, right here and here. And what we probably want to do is have all of that sort of come through. We're going to have it come down here. And then we'll have it go across. So that should give us, in theory, a, uh, a pretty good little setup here, actually. In fact, I want to raise this as well so that uh, people can kind of get into that room and walk under everything. So something like that connects it all together. And then what we do is a bit of conveyor belt here, 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 and here. And then for these guys, we want to go like this. Oh boy, how do I, how do I want to do this? Um, I guess that and that. And then you go like that. So those are all going where they need to go. And I think, I think I've got this right. I think all of this now needs to merge onto a single conveyor belt. And then we're going to want a splitter right here, which is facing the wrong way. So it faces that way. And we want to do this. So that should be fine. That now all feeds together. So the way we want to do this is select these four. And they are going to make, let's see, uh, joystick. Oh boy, this is a lot of things. Uh, controller. And then we're going to want... The gyroscopes right here so this guy and then we want a single rumble unit which is let's see right about there and we want some plastic which is right about there so that all feeds together this now needs to be doing the motherboard which i think is facing the right way uh these guys need to be doing the case and these guys need to be doing final assembly and there we go so I think that's all set up correctly. I think. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, let's see. This machine is sending components to an invalid location. I don't know that I agree with that, but sure, I guess. So it turns out I'm an idiot and I got my assemblers backwards. These guys are trying to make cases. These guys are trying to make motherboards. But now that's been resolved. And with a slight change to the layout, we're now making everything that we need to be making. And looking at this, I could probably change it further if I really wanted to. And I slightly want to change it. But I also like that this is slightly asymmetrical now. And I think it looks kind of cool. And it's cool because we have all this heading downstairs now. Although I probably also want to put a maximum on this because it's going to be kind of expensive. So we'll do 75,000 before we start printing. Because we really don't need more than that. And we'll get those picked up in a good amount of time, I'm sure. Uh, I am noticing, though, there is definitely a degree of... Uh, there's there's some stuff getting through here, right? There's, there's stuff getting through here that I don't think should be getting through here. And I'm not 100% sure why all of these components are, are getting through here. It is good that we have the recyclers, but for some reason, gyros are getting through here and, like, cases are getting through. Well, the cases are supposed to be getting through, but... I don't know why the raw components are getting through right now. That does seem a little bit weird. Maybe what we should do is rip out these parts. In fact, let's rip out these parts. 
and let's put some recyclers into those spots so that the components aren't getting uh, too much further. Now it does, oh, it is, it is throwing an issue now. It's not letting the controllers through. All right. So never mind that, I guess. We'll put the uh, conveyor belts back in there. We'll not worry about it. Had a couple of people retire. Nothing to worry about there. Let's close everything up. Uh, so the controller is getting made. We are, we are losing money on the fact that uh, components are for some reason getting through here. But I guess we'll not stress about it. I guess we'll get this thing done. Uh, also, Stabby Face returns. Quarter million people interested. That's a lot. That is a lot more than I was expecting. And the inbox controller ready to move into beta, I guess. I don't... I don't really know what to do with that because the console itself, I I could release this thing, but wait, no, I can't release it. Interesting. Okay, so, okay. Good. So that, that sets my mind to ease a little bit. We're making the controller. The controller's done years before the consoles are done. The controller's technically in stock years before the console's done, so that's nice. Uh, let's release that thing. Almost half a million people interested in Stabby Face Returns. We probably want to make sure this thing is uh, is getting printed. Let's do 100,000 copies of that thing and make sure those are in stock. And uh, hopefully that'll be enough. I'd be, uh, I'd be surprised if it wasn't. I wouldn't complain, though. You know, it's interesting that hardware is now what's slowing us down on the inbox development. That actually has me thinking that maybe, and this might be a silly idea, but maybe we get ourselves a hardware team that can deal with that. I mean, we have got plenty of space in this building to do that if we really want to. And I don't, I don't dislike the idea of putting like a hardware development team in this space because we have this space down here that we can, you know, pump stuff through into that area. So I think we should do it. I think we should put a hardware development team up here and maybe this floor gets changed a little bit to be more usable, you know, by people, right? So we do like a wall that goes across here and separates like the production floor from everything else. We could go ahead and get like a, just a door on there so you can still get access to that space. And then maybe we'll go ahead and sort of grab the style of uh, of this area we'll make the floors sort of the same so it's nice and blue and pleasant and and friendly looking we'll duplicate these lights and slap them there and there we'll go for there and there and we'll go for the uh well we'll we not do uh we not do that one but it just brightens the space up a little bit right so it gives them access to a development space which is going to need space for a team leader as well now that i think about it Although I guess this, oh, this could be their meeting space. That's perfect. Okay, maybe we don't give the team leader their own office. Or, well, maybe we, maybe we do. Because we, we do have the, we do have the room for it. So what if we said that like this was the team leader's office? It's not going to be, it's not the biggest office, but it should, that should do the job, right? Kind of gives them their own little dedicated space. So in terms of doors, we'll go for this and in terms of windows we'll give them sort of the uh the good old privacy glass right just something so you know people can see that they're in there but they can't see what they're up to which i think is fair enough i think that's that's kind of cool looking and it means that the room should be nice and bright so let's i guess get it furnished i'm not exactly sure what we're going to need for a hardware team so we'll just go for the usual bunch of desks i think we'll go modern desks on this as well and we'll go for this like blue and and all that good stuff. This also isn't going to be like a a meeting room for the the team leader. So this is this is purely going to be for work. Okay, I think this is probably a good enough space for a hardware team. So let's go ahead and set this as a leader's room and let's go to hire some employees. In fact, no, let's go to well, let's check this first. We haven't lost any leaders. Let's go to manage teams and we're going to be looking at I guess hardware and day and then we're going to be looking at hardware night as well so let's just see here it's right there in the middle hardware uh we want night we'll add the team we have both of them hr management is going to be interesting in this one though because i don't actually know how hardware 
works in this game exactly. So it's hardware design and programming. There is no art involved. That makes life a little easier. How many chairs do we have in here? We have 13. Okay. Let's do nine programmers and four design. No, let's do eight programmers and five designers. That seems like a, a fair, well, maybe seven and six. Maybe, maybe, maybe seven and six. So we're going to want seven and six. And then the specializations are going to be hardware. We want people that are going to be great at developing hardware. That sounds like a good one. We don't want people that are going to be sick. We don't want night owls. We don't want silent but deadly. So that's going to be okay. And then the salary is going to be high. We're going to educate them. We'll do like five at a time. Uh, best for handle all that and then we just do the same thing for the hardware night shift and we go ahead and get some leaders and we should be fine and just like that we should have people coming in for both teams so let's go ahead and assign the hardware teams to the inbox and let's also assign them to the end phone as well and hopefully that's going to speed things up on both of those we can close all the notifications here and I kind of want to see people using using this office. I think it's going to be pretty cool looking. It would have probably been an idea to, uh, you know, give them better access to it. Because right now they have to use, like, I don't know what. Well, prob they'll probably use this back door right here, to be completely honest. We should have them coming in shortly, I think. I'm not really too sure. I don't see anyone coming to the building yet. Oh, was that? No, that's... Wait, hold on. There they are. Yeah, so they go around and then they do. They use this door right here and they go through that uh, that factory space. I don't know that I love that they do that, but that is what they do. And they also use the stairs rather than the elevators, which makes me think my elevators are probably not very good for them. But they have a nice office space in this old looking building. So that's kind of cool. And hopefully that's going to speed up the hardware production on the inbox and the end phone as well. It kind of looks like it's doing something. I don't know if it really is. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it looks like it's going faster. So we'll assume that it's it's doing something. And then they all leave and go about their business. And I think some of them did use the elevator there. So that's nice. Oh, they have a meeting. Oh, I love that. I love that meeting room. I also forgot that the <laughs> the, guy, the people in software Inc. are like, blah, 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 blah. Clearly. They have watched my YouTube channel. I also totally forgot to release Stabby Face Returns. So let's throw that out there and see what people think. It is magnificent. Oh. Oh. Is that the first time that we have ever got five stars across the board? I think it might be. I think Stabby Face Returns might be the first time we have ever gotten five stars across the board. That makes me really happy. Let's throw that up there and see how it does. Captain Murder Stab 3, currently 60 million in profit, 10 million last month. The first expansion has gone out. How much do we need to get on the expansion for it to be a, for it to be a profit? Wow, we need nearly nothing at all. That's, that's actually kind of nuts. Okay, so that's good. Uh, let's see here then. So Captain Murder Stab, let me sort by release, Captain Murder Stab 3. We are technically updating this already, I think, and it has been ported to everything as well. So I think at this point, oh, hold on a minute. I forgot the horse simulators next month and then July 2012 for the next Captain Motor Stab, which is in development already. That's pretty cool. Okay. I like to imagine it's going to be like the Halo trilogy. We've done the first three and they're amazing. And now for some reason, the fourth one is going to be like, I don't know about that, but We'll see what happens. Uh, accept all of those and close. I'm not really too concerned about what, uh, what people want. How did Captain Motor Stab do? The add-on got 2 million. The game got 13 million last month. Not bad. That is not bad at all. I will absolutely take that. And then I think my... I guess my hardware team's already gone home. Wait a minute. I made a mistake. I forgot to say that the... Uh, <laughs> I forgot to say that these guys come in at 6 p.m. <laughs> Whoops. So you go, you come in at 6 p.m. and you leave at 2 a.m. There we go. So now the night shift can sort of do their thing and hopefully be a little bit more productive in uh, in doing it. 
Horse Simulator 3 just hit the market. It is outstanding. The marketing is terrible, <laughs> which is not good. Uh, let's get this thing ported to everything that we can possibly put it on. We also have a new console out there as well, so... We're going to go down the list to all of those, and that should be fine. So let's get that port job going. Let's see if we can update this to modern standards as well, if at all possible. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be able to, because, yeah, it turns out that my... Okay, so audio level on this thing is going to be Amplitude Studio. So we need to update Amplitude Studio. Uh, the 3D editor is going to be Vertex Studio, so that's fine. The 2D editor... Well, yeah, do we want to bring that down a little bit? 2005. What is my 2D editor's tech level? I'm now getting slightly concerned about the fact that it might be... Oh, God, it's terrible, isn't it? Oh, God. Where is... Was it, like, 99? Oh, man. All right, we're going to have to uh, do some licensing on this guy, and that's fine. So, source control, two teams, fix the bugs, update everything. There you go. Get that done. And I guess let's go to Vector Studio and try to uh, update this thing as well so we'll get it going like that we'll update vertex studio update your systems amplitude studio update uh, just about everything on there please and i don't uh you know what amplitude's gonna have to wait because once we update vertex we should be good to go on on that update so hopefully those get done in no time at all hopefully the ports get done pretty quickly and let's see if Horse Simulator 3 was actually successful. I, I have my doubts. I do have my doubts. But, you know, yeah, we actually made less money this month than we did last. Horse Simulator 3, it made 4.3 million. And also uh, 5 million last month on the Captain Motor Step add-on. 10 million on the game itself. So Horse, Horse Sim did make money. It's gone up to prominent marketing. So I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. That's not... It's not terrible. It could be better, but it's not terrible. Oh, interesting. Stabby Face Returns has fallen off a little quickly right there. Horse Sim still making money, but over a hundred million on Captain Motor Stab 3. I'll I'll take it. I'm I'm still quite happy with that. If we look at our top profit right now, I mean Captain Motor Stab is out there well over a hundred million more than Vector 5. So that's nice. Captain Motor Stab 3 has overtaken the original, so that's good, and it's on track to probably get up there a little bit. I don't necessarily know that it's going to get up to the Captain Motor Stab 2 levels, but we'll see. We could certainly throw a bit of an update at it with uh, Amplitude Studio, which has a tech level of 2008 now, and see what happens. Maybe people will appreciate the better audio experience. And then for things like these, I'll take it. It's, it's, this, this is pretty good. We got a pretty good thing going here. And so here's what I think we're going to do. We're going to leave it there for today. And next time we're going to sit down and come up with a big old assembly line for the inbox. It's going to go right in that building right there. I am really pleased with how things are going for Nerdresoft at the moment. I think we are extremely close to end game software inc in fact i think we're probably in the end game now but that doesn't mean it's going to be the end of the series we're not there yet there's still more things i want to do i want to start buying out companies i want to set up subsidiaries i want to try buying intellectual property i want to poach some people from other companies and i want to make ner i want to make nerdsoft as good as it can possibly be I want to get a console out there. I want to get games out there. I want to get phones out there and operating systems. I want all of that stuff out there, and I want it coming out regularly. So we still have to project manage a lot of stuff, which means that there is still a lot of work to do. So thanks for watching, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye bye